But now I am going to tell all the people out there who wanted to do podcasts how to do this stuff. As I said, I would. Uh, I actually remembered. So congratulations to all of us. So here it is. Um, here's what I use. I use a Zoom. This is the, what the device is called. It's called a Zoom H4N. H like Henry, the number four, N like Nancy boy. Like I would call you if you walked effeminately when I was little. Um, uh, it's a Zoom H4N. It goes about two fifty or three hundred dollars. I think I got it for two ninety nine. Um, you can get this and almost everything at Guitar Center in uh, Los Angeles if you're there. I don't know if, what they have in New York or what they have in your hometown, but um, in LA you can get them at Guitar Center on on um, on Sunset. Zoom H4N. Um, it goes about three hundred dollars. It comes with a case, and you can also record your. Um, CDs with this. I think I'm pretty positive uh, Joey Diaz recorded his CD with one. What it has is it has these two speakers that kind of go up and inwards from both sides. Um, two mics. And those are for ambient sound. You're not going to use that for your podcast. Um, but you would use that for like crowd noise as you plug the speaker, the, the other part in of the Zoom into the um, soundboard. Ask your local sound guy how to do it, and he'll help you. And you probably also need an, something called an attenuator. A-T-T-E-N-U-A-T-O-R or E-R. I forget. It's an attenuator, and it's, uh, it helps you because it's not supposed to go right into a soundboard. So also, if you're recording these through a soundboard, if you're recording podcasts, I don't know how to do that. But um, you don't really need to with this. Uh, this is what Marin told me. He said he used this for a while. I figured that's one of the best podcasts around, like one of the top ones anyway. Nobody complains about the sound, so it's good enough for me. He said he recorded an interview with Maria Bamford while in the car. Um, and I was like, can you tell you were in the car? And he goes, you could, you could tell sort of. I mean, you could hear like, like a honk like way in the background, but it's, it sounds like, the way I understood it is it sounds like uh, a movie when they're shooting a scene in the car. Like you still have, you know, ambient noise around you but you that you can tell audio wise that it is in a car but you can't doesn't stop you from hearing the people at all it doesn't affect the quality um it just doesn't sound like it would in an office building or in a cafeteria so um and i've recorded some of these in the car too and you probably can hear them i recorded one on a plane once um no that was on an iphone so the point is yeah that was on an iphone joe rogan and i recorded one on an iphone just leaning over it on a first class flight um from australia and you could hear the fucking noise. Uh, oh, no, no. Rogan and I recorded one for, for this on Skeptic Tank um, in an airplane. And you could hear the noise of the plane because it's sort of loud. It's a constant like... But it doesn't... You can hear the conversation completely. Uh, and then somebody just told me about something where you can like... Oh, I got to fucking ask her, Katie. There's, there's, there's something... Oh, I wish I could help you with this. But there's something out there. Supposedly, I think it's free. Um, where if you... Uh, isolate a single moment, like a second or two clip. So if you and your guest just be quiet, let's say it's on a plane, so you just have two seconds of the of that noise, two seconds of that, put that into this program. This program then finds all of that noise throughout, you know, the way the wave file or whatever file you're recording on, and it then um, it deletes it. So if there's a noise like that, or if it's a jackhammer in the background, you just be quiet. Or like when Joey Diaz and I did the podcast, and there was that the um, the leaf blower right next to it, we could just isolate that. It was like be quiet for two seconds, and then we could isolate it and take it out. Um, so that's a program that's out there. I wish I knew what it was, but I don't. So anyway, back to the Zoom. So you have the Zoom. Um, you're recording. You're going to record in stereo mode. Uh, the stereo HTR and four channel. You're recording in stereo mode and um, what was I going to say? Um, and you have to get this. You have to buy plugs and mics. If you're a comic, you know what they look like. If you're not, they're what comics use. Um, it's just regular mics. Um, Marin said the ones that get are the Mogami mics, M-O-G-A-M-I. Um, they're a little more expensive. You're talking about like 30 bucks, uh, anywhere from 30 to 60 bucks for those. Uh, whereas cheaper mics, which I've gotten also, and I can't really tell the sound difference, to be honest, between the good ones and the bad ones. I've got three Mogami mics and like two or three uh, non-name brand ones. And here's the ones I got. I got a 12-footer, uh, a 6-footer, and a 3-footer. 
Um, really, you don't need a long cord, but what I like doing is being able to get up and walk around the room um, and being mobile. So the 12-foot one allows you to do that. Like You can go get a beer uh, while we're talking and keep talking because it's 12 feet. Um, or you can go to the window or stuff like that. Um, so you get those, and then you get microphones. Um, Sennheiser mics are what I use, but I'm sure the, uh, the Shure mics are also okay. But I use the Sennheiser mics. I think they're about the same for audio quality. If you go to Guitar Center, you can get all these things that I've mentioned at Guitar Center. Uh, then for the mics, you just need those socks to put on there, those windscreens, so you don't the P's and the T's don't don't uh, don't pop. Um, what else do you need? I think that's it. Oh, okay. And then if you want to get so there's two cords, there's two plugs for uh, cords. There's two sockets. Uh, if you want to have three or four people on the podcast, either you can share the mics or you can um, get a splitter. And they said this, if you just split it once, it won't. This is what they told me at Guitar Center, that it will not affect the sound quality if you just split it once. Uh, if you split it from there, what it is, it's, it's a single cord goes in and then it like has two out. You guys know what splitters are, right? Um, and then you can plug two mic cords into that. Um, and you can do it on each side. Now, what I found is it actually does affect the quality a bit because if you have three people on, so there's one splitter and one regular, um, the one regular is louder than the two splitter um, lines. So if person A and person B are on the, on the, on the uh, splitter line, the one, and person C is on line two by himself, um, person C will sound way louder than person A and person B. Um, there is a way around that, um, and it is this. Oh, and I would suggest this. If you're recording like audio off a of TV, I'm low-tech, so what I'll just do is if I play a, a YouTube clip, I'll just load it onto the TV, blast it, and then put the microphone right there. Put that mic on its own channel. So split you and your guests that you're talking to, and then let the mic have its own channel, if possible. If you have three people on the mic, then you just got to do what you got to do. Um, what was I just saying? I'm sorry. I'm hoping this is clear for all you guys. Um, okay, once you get, once you record, you will want to, first of all, you have to press record twice. Once just turns it on, twice starts the counter. So you'll notice that it'll get red. The record button will get red when you hit it once, but the counter won't be moving. Um, record in stereo. Um, but then when you hit it again, the counter moves. When the counter moves, you're recording. Now, on the right side of this thing, on the left side, there's a volume button and a USB thing, and that's the USB port is where you use to plug into the um, computer to put it in the garage band. But on the, on the right side where your uh, SD card is, oh, and you got to get an SD card. If you want to record a lot of it, I think it comes with like a two gigabyte SD card. That's really enough to hold like maybe a two hour, a two hour podcast. Um, something along those lines, maybe three. But if you want to get a few or if you're going to be gone for a while, like after Marin told me that thing, I went to New York the next day and I bought this stuff like on the way home and, um, and I recorded three podcasts in New York, but I didn't have time to unload them onto my computer while I was there. So I had to get a bigger SD card and you don't want to run out of space. That's, that would be really annoying. So, uh, get like a, an eight or a 16 gigabyte SD card and put it in there. But on the right side, the, the, the REC level, the record level, as you're recording, I set mine to about, what do I have it at now? 50. Sometimes I set it at 55. I found 50 is better. I had a 55 for a while. Um, you want to set it to here. You can see there will be audio levels. Um, it will say left and right for the speaker. So I only have uh, number one plugged in right now because I'm alone. So it's just the left side is going. Um, what you want to do is the audio level, you don't want it to pop. You don't want it to hit. It, sh it shows like you know zero through... 100, it doesn't show the actual numbers, but uh, if it gets too high, if I raise my voice right now, then it gets higher than if I'm talking like this. I'm really low, then it's lower. Uh, if it gets too high, it'll hit this box at the end of that line. You'll see it when you get it, and that box will get full. The way Marin said was, if that box is full, you fucked up. You don't want it to pop. It doesn't seem like it's the worst thing in the world, because I've had plenty of podcasts that have popped, but you're just going above the level um, where the zoom can correct it for you. Um, so it'll sound distorted. So if someone starts yelling a lot, if something's getting really animated 
or if they're going to be like that the whole time, then you turn it down. You go to 40, 45, something like that. Um, if they're really soft spoken, you might want to raise it. Um, or it also depends on how you can see how far or close your guest uh, holds their microphone to your face. If you want to get mic stands, um, you can. They have these things called table stands, which I've gotten, but I've never used that I could put on TV trays if I wanted to. Um, and then the microphone would just sit into the mic holder um, uh, in front of your guest's face so they don't have to hold it. I think uh, uh, Lame, what's her name? Elizabeth Lame. I think she uses those. And she just puts them on her kitchen table, her dining room table, and everyone sits around and talks, and you don't have to hold the microphone. The way Marin said it to me, which I, 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 he was, I was like, do you need like mic stands? He goes, most of the people you're going to interview are comedians. They know how to hold a mic. But with that said, and with the mic stand, some people will go closer, some people will go further away. So if they're really close and they're eating the mic, either tell them to move away or um, lower the volume. And if they just don't know how to keep it close enough to their face, then raise the volume. Um, so there you go. Now, once you have your podcast recorded, um, you turn off the Zoom, um, plug the USB cord into your computer, one end and one end into the Zoom, and then it sort of goes on into this different mode, and then you hit this thing to the right saying saying um, that you want to upload it, the, 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 the uh, wheel, you just push that in, it'll say like, it'll say like, like connect or something like that with your computer and then a file will open up and your file will be there in the the file that you just recorded a folder will open up excuse me and your file will be in there and that'll be what you just recorded you can rename it while still in the zoom if you wanted to um uh i set my my date on my zoom so that i can sort of tell when these things were recorded because it saves it by date name uh like this will be saved by five nine one two or something like that oh five one nine one two um and then you can rename it like the Ralphie outro. I would rename this. Anyway, then you take that, you drag that to your computer, wherever you want it, uh, and then you put it in GarageBand. But before you put it in GarageBand, there's a program that I wish I knew about when I started because it would have saved me six to nine hours a week. But nobody told me about it. It is called Levelator. And what that does, it just evens everything out for you. So when I used to put my... Uh, speaker, my, my one microphone right next to the um, TV when I wanted to record like a YouTube thing, um, I would have to go in individually, find out where it was, it was still too low, find out those places and manually raise all those places as high as I could in volume. And you can only raise it so far. Um, you can lower it all the way, but you can only raise it so far to try to get the sound up a little bit. Um, it was really difficult. And all the moments when everybody was popping, uh, I have to try to lower those. So I have to find them individually. What Levelator does, L-E-V-E-L-A-T, I think O-R, it's free. Just go to the website, download Levelator. You start it up, you take your WAV file that you just used, that you just recorded this podcast, like this thing I'm recording now is a WAV file. I will take this. I will Once I open up Levelator, I will take this and just drag it in. What Levelator does is just churns it out and spits it right back out. So you have the exact... It'll be the exact same um, file space, like the same amount of space used, but um, it'll be audio corrected now. So all the popping moments, the parts that got too high will be lowered slightly. All the super low moments will be brought up. So when I had a YouTube clip, an audio clip that was low, it now sounds like it's not low at all. It, like way higher than I could even even out in GarageBand myself. Um, so yeah, then there's this other thing. Once you have that file, then you drag that into GarageBand. I, I can't really take you all the way through how to use GarageBand, but this is one secret I learned that if you raise the volume to try to get it louder, what that will sometimes do is that will lower the volume because what they'll do is they'll take the highest point, like the highest moment of volume, they will lower that to an acceptable level while also lowering everything else. So the more you raise the volume, the more it actually just lowers the volume of everything. Um, so instead what you have to do is, oh, and by the way, when you are in GarageBand, when you export this into an MP3, cause that's what you'll put, that's what you'll upload to, um, to the web is an MP3. You have to export. So you have a wave file, you drag that into GarageBand, you edit it, add music, add beginnings, add endings, whatever you want. Um, 
and then you export it. See, now I want to smoke more pot while I'm doing this, but I can't because these fucking rules. <sighs> anyway, you know, I'm going to get in trouble again. If I keep smoking pot now, that would be a, that would be a slap in the face. But, um, oh, so you export it. But when you export it, uh, export into mono because my first ones when I was testing it, what would happen is if people were listening, like on the computer, it sounded fine, but if they're listening with earbuds, one guy, whoever was on the, the, the first mic would be on the left side, whoever was on the second mic would be on the right side. But if, so if you listen with one earbud, you only get one person talking, and the other person would be silent. Um, so you export it into mono so that it's even on both sides. Um, once you export it into mono, then there's this thing to, to over step that that that's the way you uh you that it automatically lowers you take that mp3 bring that into a new garage band file um let that load up then okay if i can open up garage band for this if you have it uh open it up if not get it and then come back to this open up garage band on the right uh it shows the i button that's where you can information i think that's for View, hide, track info. Uh, when you open that up, you can edit a bunch of stuff. There's a browse edit for a real instrument. There's also on the top right, instead of the top left where a real instrument is, the top right has master track. Hit that, and then hit edit. And now what you want to do is you want to unclick the echo and the reverb, which should already be checked, uh, for track effects. For master effects... Don't worry, this should be up, should be visual equalizer, compressor, and ducker. Don't worry about any of those. In a blank master effects, it's when you when you land your mouse over it, it says click here to add an effect. Once you put over it, it doesn't say anything until you get the mouse over it. So click that. All the way at the bottom is this thing called AU peak limiter. AU peak limiter. There's AU dynamic processor, AU distortion, there's all these things. Go to AU peak limiter. This is what I use. Hit it. And then, so now it's checked. Um, in the picture of what it is, which looks like, um, like a ball with sound coming out of it, uh, click that, and then it opens up an equalizer. On the bottom, it says attack time, release time, not the bottom, the left. It says attack time, release time, pre-gain, and limiting amount. On the pre-gain line, you want to take that, it should be to zero. It should be zero dB. It goes from minus 40 to plus 40. You want to raise that, it said on this video I saw, to about an eight. So you can't really do that unless you go in there and manually do an eight. Oh, you can do it manually. I never consider that. I was always doing it, um, just dragging the thing, so I always set it to 8.12 because I can never make it land on eight. Um, so I set it to 8.12. That makes everything louder. But what that all, slightly, but what that also does is it, lets you um, not let me get this back to zero it lets you not um, oh hold on oh yeah okay it lets you not uh, it won't correct that thing so when you when you then export it again it will no longer drop everything to the lowest point uh, whatever anyway uh, sorry I'm working while I do this um, it won't edit everything to the last point. It won't lower everything. So then what you can do is then raise the volume however much you want. If it's low, it's low. So what I'll do is I'll raise mine to like the master volume to like 2.5 and the track volume to like 2. Um, and it'll just be a bit louder. And then you can mess with as loud or as soft as you want. My feeling is I want people to be able to listen to this at like 60% of volume and have, have it be fine. Because if it's at 100% and it's still struggling, then you try to listen to it in an airport or something, you can't hear anything. So I'd rather you just turn the music down a little bit and be able to hear it fine. Um, just in case it's too low, you want to be able to turn it up. Um, and then, so then you export that to an MP3, and then you take that MP3, and you put that on either Libsyn or whatever server you're, you're using. Libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N, it stands for Liberated Syndication. It's a site for about 20 bucks a month. Um, you can get it for 10, you can get it for 40, depending on how much room you want. It will store your podcasts for you. Um, that's what a lot of people are using. I think Duncan uses that, Duncan Trussell, a uh, bunch of other people use that. Um, he told me about it. And then when you load that up to Libsyn, you will then start an iTunes account, and your iTunes account will mirror the Libsyn account. 
So you won't have to up to upload to iTunes every time. You just give iTunes the RSS feed that you'll get from Libsyn. They'll give you an RSS feed. You give that once you start your account. You will give that to iTunes. And then just like when someone had on their MySpace page, when they had like a, or on Facebook, when they have like a YouTube video, you're not actually playing that video on their Facebook account. You're playing it on iTunes, but it's just, I mean on YouTube, but it's just mirrored onto the Facebook. So that's what iTunes actually does. It just sort of mirrors it from the Libsyn. So you just put it on Libsyn, and then once it's up on Libsyn, within 10 minutes to three hours, it's up on iTunes. Usually closer to 10 to 20 to 30 minutes in that range. And then that's it. And then you have yourself a podcast. Uh, I hope that answered everybody's questions. If you have more questions, eh, don't, don't bother me too much with different things. Like when's the best time to shop at Guitar Center? Like, come on, do some stuff yourself. I told you about as much as I know of GarageBand. I learned it seven months ago when I started doing these on my own. I really hadn't used it before. So you got to play around with it. I, my advice is mess around, play some. Uh, that's how you learn computer programs, by playing. So play. Um, make some things and fuck around where it doesn't mean anything. Don't have, to, don't have a fucking deadline when, you, when, you're, when you're using it. And that's it. I hope you guys uh, enjoy. And thank you very much again for listening to Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank. This is episode 59B.